All right, uh, get your Bibles. Let's open them to the book of Proverbs, chapter number five. Proverbs chapter five. So ang ginagawa natin tuwing Wednesday. So we're just taking a look at the book of Proverbs, and we are now in chapter number five, the wisdom book of the Bible. And if anything in this world that's lacking, it's surely lacking the wisdom of God. And we're, we can be thankful that if we go to God and ask Him for wisdom, that he, uh, He'll give us the wisdom that we need. And He upbraideth not, the Bible says, that means, hindi niya pinagkakait yung kanyang karunungan, kaalaman, the wisdom. If we go to God and ask Him for it, He will give it to us, and He'll give it in abundance. And the question is, are you going to use the wisdom that God gives you. Uh, i-a-apply mo ba yung wisdom na ibibigay sa iyo ng Diyos? So, Proverbs chapter 5, we come now to a very important section in the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. Uh, Solomon is going to drive home some very important biblical truths concerning the strange woman. And uh, the folly or the danger and the wickedness of adultery and the wisdom of marriage the wisdom of marriage and so and there are some minor I say minor it's not really minor there's some other things he'll be covering in chapter 6 there's three types of uh, wicked men in chapter 6 and then chapter 7 we'll go back to that um, uh, strange woman and all this and that <clears throat> but uh, five, six, and seven very very significant like <laughs> Like all the book of Proverbs is very significant. Like every book in the Bible is significant. Uh, so, but uh, we are now in chapter 5. Okay? So let's go ahead. We're going to read the whole uh, chapter 5. And um, just follow along with me as I read through this. And uh, let's pray first and then ask the Lord uh, to bless. And then we'll uh, read Proverbs chapter 5. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, God, that you would give us clarity, Lord, that we could see the scriptures, that we can comprehend them, and then we can apply them to our lives. I pray, Father, your blessing upon us, Lord. Uh, preserve some young people. Uh, help us, Lord, to follow the scriptures instead of following our feelings and our emotions and our heart. We ask that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, Proverbs chapter 5 says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to mine understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword, Her feet goeth down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. And lest thou shouldst, shouldst ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house." Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy blood are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction in my heart, despised reproof. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ears to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and the pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravaged with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? 
For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. And he shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. So uh, King Solomon, this is the, the tenth and eleventh time that he uses this phrase, my son. So think number yung verse 1, you see my son, and then look out over in um, verse number 20. You will, oh, well, I see here, um, verse number, yeah, verse number 20. You will see my son again there. So this is my son number 10, my son number 11. There will be 23 times that uh, Solomon is addressing his son. Now, he's not just addressing his son, Rehoboam. He's also addressing young people. Think number young verse number uh, seven. Look at verse number seven. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children. All right, so see the young children, sa Bible. Though, well, you could say 40 years old, bababa, is children. Sa, sa uh, uh, Greek culture, sa Hebrew culture 60 pababa it's children pag 60 na pataas that is uh, no longer youth so anong gusto mo Hebrew or Greek <laughs> Hebrew na lang no but but uh, the point I'm making is uh, this instruction is good for Rehoboam it's good for young people and just like it's good for uh, Rehoboam and young people All the words of God are good for everybody. You see, uh, it's it's folly, it's foolishness to say, well, this doesn't apply to me, therefore I don't have to listen to the scriptures. Well, that's not true. If God has a standard for someone, it's good for everyone. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, for example, sa so 1 Timothy chapter 3, may standard si God para sa mga pastors. Sa mga pastors, no? He has a standard, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Eh, kung maganda yun para sa mga pastor, maganda ba yun para sa mga men ng church? Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Okay. God gave Adam one wife. Uh, so that's his standard for Adam. Uh, is that good for every man to have one wife only? Absolutely, yes. You see, there's wisdom there. Well, some people didn't have one wife. I think of Abraham. He had three wives. So, it's yung tatlong asawa ni Abraham. There's Sarah, and then there's Hagar, and then there's Kethura. So, tatlo yung uh, asawa niya. And uh, was his life full of trouble? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you see, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you, you, you're not going to violate the principles of the Word of God and not invite trouble. Okay, so you're, you'll, we'll always have trouble when we violate scriptures. Well, in Proverbs chapter 5, King Solomon is addressing a very important uh, concern for young people. For young people. So, ang lipunan ng kapanahonan ni Solomon ay katulad din sa lipunan natin ngayon. Uh, let's just say, uh, even today, I was surprised as I was looking at the news. Merong isang um, ano siya, uh, bureaucrat na nagtatrabaho dito sa Pinas. At ang sabi niya, yung rate ng teen pregnancy ay mataas sa lipunan ng Pilipinas. There is a problem of teen pregnancy in the Philippines. What is that? That means teenagers are having children. Okay? <clears throat> um, do you think a teenager is responsible enough to, to, to have a child? No. By no, no stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> Now, he offered some solutions that is not scripture. <clears throat> But it's amazing to me that an unsaved, presumably unsaved, Uh, bureaucrat can can understand that young people should not be having children. (laughs) 
And so, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 5 has something to say about this, this sin problem. And young people are the target of this. So, sa mga young people, madalas, ang gusto nila, easy money and easy intimacy, physical relationships. Easy. And uh, the book of Proverbs is placed here by God to say, no, life shouldn't be made easy. Real life is not easy. But if you do it God's way, you'll be, there's great rewards and great blessings. Easy money and easy uh, 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 intimacy and physical relationship. <clears throat> Uh, that's a that's a curse, and young people have a tendency not to see the end results of their decisions and choices. Mahirap sa kabataan na sabihan sila, wag mong gawin ito sa pagkat yung dulong wakas ay hindi magiging maganda para sa yon. Kaya madalas ang young people ay sinaso sinusua sina sinusuway madalas sinusuway para hindi ka madala ng kalokohan mo you understand that? kasi hindi mo kinoconsider yung dulong wakas ng desisyon mo normally normally children don't see the importance of the future and what, what I'm saying is If you give yourself to immorality now, you will destroy your future. Ano magiging hinaharap mo kung you want easy money and easy uh, intimate life, intimacy, physical relationship. <clears throat> But God is not blind. God gave us a word, and this word here teaches us principles. That marriage is better than fornication. Marriage is better than fornication. <clears throat> so here in Proverbs 5, we find four, five divisions. So Proverbs 5. First is the call of attention. Uh, Solomon is bringing his son's attention to himself. My son... Attend to my wisdom, bow thine ear to mine understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, that thy lips may keep knowledge. So, uh, young people, you should have in your lips the word of God to respond to temptation. Okay? Kung wala, hindi ka nakahanda na magbigay ng word of God, hindi ka handa sa temptation na parating. Huh? God... God's going to allow temptation to come into your life uh, naturally. All men are tempted in common. The Bible teaches that. But it's up to you to store knowledge in your lips and to take heed, uh, to, to bow your ear to understanding, uh, to listen to the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. All right, so here's another warning regarding the strange woman in verse number 3 to verse number 6. Uh, nag-warning na siya patungkol sa strange woman. Tingnan mo yung Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Solomon gave a warning concerning the strange woman. Uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. All right, so this strange woman is known for flattering words. Ano yung flattering words? Ibig sabihin yung mga salita na nakakapag-encourage. Ha? Nakaka-engganyo. Wow, tingnan mo yung, yung suot mo. Napakaganda. Uy, guwapo ka, sir. <laughs> hey there, big boy. <laughs> Flattering lips. <clears throat> Now he goes on to explain Proverbs chapter 5 verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. 
I mean, <clears throat> she tells you everything you want to hear. Everything she says is nice and sweet. Napaka-sweet naman niya, napaka-ganda naman ng mga sinasabi niya. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Is oil smooth? Man, I don't think you can find anything smoother than oil. The strange woman's lips is smoother than oil. Yeah, she'll make you think you got it all together. <laughs> But look at the end. Wow. But the end. Now here's wisdom showing you what you can expect if you give yourself to the strange woman. Look at what the Bible says. But her end is bitter as warm wood. Now warm wood is, uh, <clears throat> that's poison. Hmm? And bitter. Huh? Mapait. No? So biro mo, nagsimula kayo, napaganda. Kasi sinasabi niya, guwapo ko, ma- ma- maganda yung suot ko, yung buhok ko, yung amoy ko, and so on. Pero yung dulong wakas, lason, at napakapait, Sharp as a two-edged sword. Masakit sa puso. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. This is, this is strong language. This is strong language. Let me just say the Bible, the Bible teaches us that no whoremonger and adulterer shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is what God's teaching us. Okay? So kung karakteristik ka, ng isang whoremonger or adulterer, that just simply means it could very well be you're not born again and saved. That's why you have no sense, no godliness, no biblical sense. Uh, you're on your way to a devil's hell. <clears throat> Now, the Bible says here, uh, uh, the end of her is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword, and feet go down to death and steps take hold on hell. Let me tell you something. 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Did you know that? 50% of marriages end in divorce. And by the way, second marriages don't have a good shot at it neither. So, if I know the scriptures, and I think I know the scriptures, I can honestly say there are many, 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 many homes who are experiencing wormwood, bitterness, two-edged sword life, feet going down to death, steps taking hold of on hell. Kung baga, yung buhay nila sa mundong ito ay parang wasak na. The greatest place besides church on earth ought to be the home. Amen? Amen. The greatest place on earth outside a church is home. But you will not have a good home if you marry or fall into fornication and commit adultery. You are going against the Lord God who created everything. If you don't go obtaining a life partner God's way, You will suffer the consequences. And I'm telling you right now, there are many, many homes that you don't want to be in that house. You wouldn't want that home. Verse 6, Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou cannot not, canst not know them. Tingnan mo alimbawa. Nag- adultery ka o nag-fornication ka? Let's say, for example, you committed fornication and adultery. Do you think that the person you committed adultery with will be faithful to you? Hmm? Magiging faithful ba siya sa'yo? Kung yung ugali niya hindi maka-Diyos ngayon, sa palagay mo, mamaya pag nagsama kayo, magiging maka-Diyos siya? You are fooling yourself. Her ways are movable. So anong ibig sabihin ng movable? Unstable. Ha? 
And thou canst not know them. You don't know. One day she'll be liking you. The next day she'll be liking somebody else. You see that? This is wisdom. This is wisdom. <clears throat> and then now in verse number 7, hanggang verse number 14, he's going to um, uh, describe the foolishness of adultery. The foolishness of adultery. Chapter uh, 5, verse 7. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children. He's speaking to children. Okay, now we know what children is in the scriptures. Hebrew. <laughs> This is even uh, Old Testament. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, should we be warning children about this? Yes. We should warn children about this. Bakit? Kasi marami pa silang taon na pwedeng i-google. At kung matutunan na ng mga bata ito ngayon, alam nila, i-preserve nila yung sarili nila para sa kanilang asawa. Amen. Hear me now, therefore, ye children, depart not from, my, from the words of my mouth. Depart not from the words of my mouth. If there's anything that describes apostasy, it is the departure from the words of the Lord. That is apostasy. So, kayong mga nakakarinig ngayon ng biblical instruction, kung sa isip ninyo, hindi ito para sa akin, hindi ito, ayan, para lang yan sa mga baptist na nandyan sa unit 19. Okay? You, you, you are very, very ignorant of the word of God. Now, this biblical principle is for all of us and we better not depart from it. We better never depart from it. Do you think if you're a child and you're in the Word of God that it's guaranteed if you're a teenager you're still in the Word of God? Is that a guarantee? Garantisado ba? Pag yung bata lumaki sa salita ng Diyos, pagdating ng teenager, na mananatili pa siya sa salita ng Diyos, is that guaranteed? No. No. What about if he becomes an adult? Is that guaranteed that he'll stick by the scriptures? No. no. So, hindi, ano, hindi imposible sa lahat na uh, iwanan ang mga salita ng Diyos, di ba? Yeah? We are all susceptible to depart from the words of the Lord. And so I'm warning everybody right now, you better make a decision that no matter how old you are or how old you get, Don't ever depart from the words of the Lord. Amen. Don't ever depart from the words of the Lord. Verse number 8. Remove thy foot away far from her. Come not nigh the door of her house. So, nung kapanahon ni Solomon, yung mga horse or yung mga prostitutes or yung mga um, uh, 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 illicit women uh, were accessible through a house of whoredoms. This is exactly what Rahab uh, had a reputation of. Naalala niyo yung spies na bumisita kay Rahab? Uh, they chose Rahab specifically because everybody expects foreigners to, to, to commit fornication in a house like that. Now, uh, the Bible says that here, but let me, let me make an application yung bahay ng mga whores or prostitute, hindi lang ho yan ngayon accessible sa kalsada, nandito na rin ho yun. You understand that? And the Bible says, enter not. You better not ever enter in a pornography website or a pornography uh, uh, phone. <clears throat> you see, It used to be they go to the house. Listen, this is in our homes. These, this is in our house. So we better be very careful about these things. Very careful about these things. Tingnan mo ang result. Tingnan mo ang dulong wakas ng tao na easy relationship. Verse number 9. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Let me tell you something. Fornication and adultery 
will eat up your years. Years. Let me ask you a question. How many of us have uh, years to waste? Do we all, do any of us have any years to waste? Meron ba tayong mga taon na pwedeng itapon? Hmm? Sa isip nyo, meron ba tayong mga taon na pwedeng isayang? No? Kung ang buhay ng tao, 70 years na ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos, 80 kung malakas ang katawan, and that's the general lifespan of man according to the scriptures, how many years do you want wasted? How many years do you want to give to the cruel? Well, if you ask me, I don't want any years given to the cruel. So if you don't want your years given to the cruel, then don't give your heart to the strange woman. Don't do that. Verse 10, Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth. Gusto mo bang i-google yung pera mo sa mga tao na hindi mo kilala? Ayan ang mangyayari sa'yo kapag hindi ka sumunod sa salita ng Diyos. Thy labors in the house of a stranger. How do you want that? My hard work will go to no one. To, will go to nothing. Will go to waste. That thou, and that thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Do you understand what sexually transmitted disease is? Alam mo ba kung ano yung STD? Hmm? Ano yung STD, Brother Bill? Yan yung sakit na makukuha mo sa pamamagitan ng pagtalik na hindi blines ng Panginoon. That happens when you physically have relationship with others that God did not sanction. <clears throat> oh yes, your flesh and body will be consumed. The Bible teaches that. <clears throat> Verse number 12, and say, how have I hated instruction? You're going to go back. If you go into the strange woman, you're going to say one day, Oh, how have I hated instruction. My heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Binaliwala ko kasi ang salita ng Diyos, yung mga nagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos. Hindi ko inapply ang salita ng Diyos sa buhay ko. Kaya ngayon, <laughs> But that's your fault. It's your fault because you didn't listen to the, to the scriptures. You didn't listen to the word of God. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. In the midst of the congregation, kung saan tinuturuan kami ng salita ng Diyos, dun pa ako napahama. So there's the folly of adultery. Now, <clears throat> Do you want do you want that for your life? Hmm? Yan ba yung gusto mo sa buhay mo? Na magkaganyan ang buhay mo? Di wag ka kasi mag-commit ng adultery and fornication. Don't do that. <clears throat> so what's God's what's God's answer so that nobody has to commit fornication and adultery? Well, verse 15 hanggang verse 20. This is called the wisdom of marriage. So God made a way para hindi lahat ng tao ay mauwi sa fornication and adultery. <clears throat> Verse 15. Drink waters out of thine own cisterns and running waters out of thine own well. Look, you don't have to go somewhere else to have relationships and money and that kind of stuff. You can work your own self and drink from your own cisterns And, and have the satisfaction uh, uh, of God blessing your life if you do it His way, you see. <clears throat> Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the street. <clears throat> This uh, refers to children. Uh, <clears throat> may your children be blessed. May they be abundant and they may, may, may they be blessed of God. <clears throat> Let them only be thine own. Make sure they are yours, <laughs> that your own, your own wife, your own children, and not strangers with thee. 
Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. You rejoice in the wife of your youth. So, God, so generally speaking, general lang ha? Kasi book of Proverbs ito. Remember, the book of Proverbs is gen- gen- generic truth. Ha? Hindi naman ito applicable sa lahat ng minor details. Pero generally speaking, let me just say it like this. Generally speaking, God designed man to be married and to have a wife. That's, that's general truth. Now, truthfully, <clears throat> there are some eunuchs. The, the book of Matthew teaches that. And some guys uh, are not called to married life. There is that. There is that kind of guy. <clears throat> But for the majority of guys, or the general idea here, is that God designed a man to marry a woman. And they're to complement one another. They complement each other. And they help each other. <clears throat> God designed for man and woman to bear many children. God wants uh, married couples to have children. Generally speaking now, in the particular, not everyone who's married have children. Some people have a hard time having children. So I'm not preaching this as you're in sin if you're not married or you're in sin if you don't have children. And that, that's, not, that's foolishness. I'm not talking about that. What Solomon is doing here is he's, he's taking a step back and looking at life and saying you can be an adulterer and a fornicator or you can be a happy married man. <clears throat> so let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as a loving hind and a pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with Her love, not the love of a strange woman, but the love of her, your wife. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> God designed that man will fulfill his physical needs through his wife. You see that? That's the plan of God. Kaya tinuturuan tayo ng salita ng Diyos dito, wag kang, uh, wag kang mga lunya. Don't commit adultery with somebody else. That this woman will satisfy me physically this year. Then this one here will satisfy me another year. <laughs> Then this one will satisfy me another time. And that one over there. And it, by the way, it only takes one to, to be an adulterer. You don't have to have multiple partners. If you're not faithful to your wife, you are an adulterer. <clears throat> And uh, so... Uh, it says here, let her, let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be ravished always with her love. Um, ito yung physical aspect ng pag-asawa. And God acknowledges that. Uh, let me just say, yung physical aspect ng pag-asawa is a big blessing and a joy. It's a wonderful thing. But, just like anything else, if you're in sin, yung physical relationship pwedeng maging uh, curse. And how is that? Well, if you, instead of ra- being ravished by the love of your wife, you're looking for that love somewhere else. That's sin. <clears throat> and why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman in the embrace of the, the bosom of a stranger? Why would you look for satisfaction somewhere else? You're in sin. That's wickedness. So ang plan ng Panginoon, God intends for a husband to have fidelity to his wife. Fidelity to his wife. Brother Bill, ano yung fidelity? Ibig sabihin yung katapatan. Tapat ka sa asawa mo at siya lang ang mamahalin mo. Let me say it like this. <clears throat> a man who follows God is going to be so fulfilled and satisfied, he will not want the love of a strange woman. And there's something wrong when a guy does not love his wife 
and looks for attention from somebody else. That's sin. That's wrong. <clears throat> so God designed marriage to prevent men from fornication. So girls, pag yung boyfriend mo gustong hawakan yung kamay mo, bigyan ka ng isang kiss, sampalin mo. Kasi hindi pa time para sa physical at physical aspects ng relationship. Brother Bill, kailan yung physical re- uh, aspecto ng relationship? Kailan? Ha? Huh? Tagalog. Marunong ka mag-Tagalog. <laughs> ha? Kailan <laughs> dapat? Pagkatapos, yes. Pagkatapos ng kasal. Now, pansinin mo yung mga thief, yung mga magnanakaw. Kukunin nila yung gusto nila. Pag nakuha na nila yung gusto nila, iiwanan ka na para kang basura. You have to see this from the scriptures. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And verse number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so that ye would abound more and more, for ye know what, the command, what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, Even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Okay, so anong sabi dito ni Paul? Lahat kayo mga members ng Thessalonian Baptist Church, wag na wag kayong maging fornicator. Alamin ninyo ang kalooban ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng inyong uh, sanctification. Verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. Let me ask you a question. What's your vessel? If you need to know how to possess your vessel, what's your vessel? Hmm? Your body? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you could say that. I'll give you that. <clears throat> the vessel here is the vessel that prevents you from fornication. Nakita niyo yung verse 3? Abstain from fornication. And so you should be able to know how to obtain your vessel that prevents you from fornication. The vessel here is your marriage partner, your lifelong partner. You better learn how to possess that. How do you acquire it? How do you possess it? Well, you better learn how to do that. Because if you don't know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor, you're going to fall into fornication. So, meron palang proper way na dapat yung lalaki sa babae. There's a proper way. At yung babae para sa lalaki. There's a proper way. At kung hindi ka susunod sa salita ng Diyos, garantisado mauwi yan sa mali. <clears throat> Verse 5. How do you possess your vessel? Well, certainly not in the lust of concupiscence. That's, that's immorality. That's lust and immorality. That's not how you find your wife. <clears throat> Even as the Gentiles which know not God. That's what Gentiles do. That's what Greek do. <laughs> That's what dogs do. <laughs> they don't have, they don't, they don't know how to acquire a life partner scripturally. Verse 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother. 
defraud his brother. Do you understand that if you mistreat a young woman, that you are mistreating somebody's future wife? And you could potentially defraud your brother of a godly wife. <clears throat> defraud not his brother in any matter because, here's a good reason why you shouldn't fornicate and defraud your brother, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we have also forewarned you and testified, because God is the avenger. God's the avenger. <clears throat> He's going to judge every whoremonger and every fornicator and every adulterer. God's the judge. Tinamo Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Amen. That's great. And the bed undefiled. Amen. That's the marriage bed. <clears throat> But, ito naman yung salabas ng kasal. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see that? God will judge. God will judge. Now go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. God will judge. Remember that. God's the avenger. He will judge. That's exactly what chapter 5, verse 21, hanggang 23, that's what it's talking about. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. Hey, do you, do you believe that God is watching you? That God is observing you? Yeah. Yeah. God is. He's, he's watching you. So, does He know if you engage in fornication? Yeah, He does. Huh. And do you think He'll let you go and everything will be okay and you'll get away from it and nobody will ever know? And... <clears throat> no, it won't. Because God gave us boundaries. And it's up to us to live inside the boundaries. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Ha? Nakatanikala ka sa sarili mong kasalanan. Ikaw ang gumawa nun eh. He shall die without instruction. Wow, that's sad. Hmm. And, and, and in the, the greatness of his folly shall he go astray. So sad, sad situation here. Now let, let, me, let me just throw this out to you. Any man who follows the Lord and obeys His word in the area of obtaining a life partner will never regret their decision. Ang tao na ginagawa niya yung tama ayon sa salita ng Diyos, hindi niya, hindi niya, ano yung regret? Hindi niya pinagsisisihan yung desisyon niya. Ang tao na gumagawa ng salita ng Diyos ay hindi nagsisisi sa desisyon niya na sumunod sa Diyos. Alam mo kung sino yung mga nagsisisi? Yung mga nakaupo sa church na tinuturuan ng ganito na hindi nakikinig. Yun ang mga nagsisisi. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> yung pinakasalan ko hindi pala kristyano halika dito halika dito bless kita sinong sinong na, na, bakit sino nagdesisyon na pakasalan yun unggoy na yun oh. ako brother RJ do you regret obtaining your life partner Brother RJ, would you switch places with anybody in the world? Never. Think no more. I'm telling you right now. I would never exchange my life for anybody. For anybody. I obtain my life partner. And hanggang kamatayan, it's until death. Until death. Until death.
hindi pinaglalaroan yung boyfriend-girlfriend. Pag merong halimbawa, young man, na gusto kang boyfriend-girlfriend or whatever, young man-girlfriend. <laughs> Pag merong young man na gusto kang i-girlfriend ka, wala siyang trabaho, wala siyang responsibility, hindi naman alam ang Bible, hindi nag-church. Ibibigay mo ba yung puso mo sa kanya? Kasi guwapo siya, maganda yung buhok ko, ma- ma- mabango yung amoy. Ha? Alam ba ng Diyos na gusto mo rin balang araw magkaroon ng family? Alam ba ng Diyos na gusto mo rin magkaroon ng mga anak? Alam ba ng Diyos yung future mo? Eh kung alam ng Diyos yan, bakit hindi ka magtiwala sa Kanya? Na siya ang magbigay sa iyo ng partner na talagang nagmamahal sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Hmm? Imbis yung mga loko-loko na naglalaro lang. Ha? Gagamitin ka ng ilang weeks, ilang months tapos basura iwanan ka na may anak ka pa but God it's best to trust in the Lord because the Lord knows what we need and men need good wives and wives need good husbands you see <clears throat> so Uh, habang bata kayo, dapat naririnig niya ninyo ito. You need to hear this, okay? Because you are preparing yourself for what God has for you. Okay? So, prepare yourself now. Ano ba? May lumapit sa'yo. Ay, mag-boyfriend, girlfriend tayo, ha? Tayo, ha? Sabihin mo, okay, um, question na, may tanong lang ako, ha? Naniniwala ka ba sa Diyos? <laughs> Naniniwala ka ba kay Yeso Kristo? Ah, saan ka nag-church? Anong binasa mo sa Bible kanina? Oh, yung mga tanong na gano'n ang dapat mong tanungin. Hindi yung, ano yung perfume mo? Napakabango. Dapat tanungin mo, saan, mo, saan pondo mo kinuha yung ginastos mo para sa perfume mo? Ay, ano lang? Anong pondo? <laughs> What funds? Yung gagamitin mo para para um, para bayaran yung meral ko pag nagkaroon na tayo ng bahay. Ha? Huh? What? <laughs> Yun. Yung mga ganun question dapat ang tanungin mo. Hindi yung uh, ano, ilang taong ka na? <laughs> ano yung ano? Ano yung, ano yung sino yung best friend mo? stupid questions. Ask the real questions. Uh, ask the godly questions. Ask the biblical questions. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the biblical truths we find in Scripture concerning uh, obtaining a life partner, staying away from this strange woman. Lord, I pray, God, you protect all, the, all of us from the strange woman, from the strange man, from fornicators and adulterers and whoremongers, Lord. And I pray we don't become any of that, Lord. Help us to be godly people because you are good to us and you are great on our behalf. Help us to live for you instead of self. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.